the hour of convening having arrived, all members of this house will please report to the floor and take your seats. All members of this house will please report to their seats. The clerk will ring the bell. All right, we're going to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. We will begin our day today with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the lady from the 73rd House District, Chairman Karen Mathiak. Chairman Mathiak. Good morning, Mr. Speaker, and thank you. Good morning, colleagues. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce not only a pastor of mine, but a great friend. Ricky Shepard was born and raised in Griffin, Georgia. Go Bears, right? <laughs> and in light of what we heard yesterday with the Mental Health Parity Act, it's so fitting to have Pastor Shepard here today. As a young teenager, young adult, Ricky became an alcoholic and battled it for many years until the age of 28 when he gave his life to Christ and began a new life that didn't involve alcohol. The past 18 years, Ricky has been involved in a full-time ministry and spends his days encouraging and helping people who are battling with addictions or just in need of help. Ricky has served in, on multiple school boards, including Monroe Academy and Rock Springs Christian Academy. He currently is, does leadership training for local churches and businesses, as well as motivational speaking. Ricky is currently serving as executive pastor of Christ Chapel Community Church in Zebulon, Georgia, and is the vice chairman for the Pike County Chamber of Commerce. Representative Camp. <laughs> Ricky is proud to be the son of Harold and Phyllis Shepherd of Griffin, Georgia, and his dad, Harold, is 96 years old, a World War II veteran, and still drives, but he's asking us to be real careful around breakfast and dinner on any given day. He has one teenage daughter, Riley, who is currently a ninth grade online um, Liberty University student, and his favorite saying is, love people where they are and don't leave them where you found them. Pastor Ricky. Thank you, Speaker Austin, and 
Representative Mathiak, for, uh, for me being here today. I'm, I'm honored to be here today. It is uh, an honor to come and to, to speak with you. I, I first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for your service to our great state. Um, it's a uh, years ago I was actually approached. I love politics. <clears throat> and years ago I was actually approached by some people to want me to run for, for office. And I told them, I said, you know, I said, there's enough true stuff about me that I don't want my daughter to know, let alone have folks make stuff up about me. So I, I, kindly, uh, I kindly passed, but I appreciated the offer. I want to talk to you today about just having a great day. It's going to be a great day. I got out of bed at 6 o'clock this morning when my feet hit the floor, headed to the gym, and I said, it's going to be a great day. The scripture says in Psalms 18:24, it says, Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I believe there's four things that we can do today and every day to ensure that we're going to have a great day. The first thing we can do is just look. Start each day looking for the good in people. It seems that we live in a day now where we're so busy trying to find things in people or things in, in circumstances that, that divide us rather than unite us. I, I was raised in, in, with my parents. They taught us that if you go looking for trouble, you'll find it. I, I believe the opposite is true as well. If you'll go looking for good, you'll find it. Take time each day just to get up and just look. Look for the good in people. Even in the worst of us, there's always something good that can be found in us. So not only should we look, the second thing is just listen. Helen Keller once said that the only thing worse than not having sight is to have sight with no vision. And to put a different spin on that, I'd say the only thing worse than having ears to hear is to listen without hearing. See, one thing that I know for sure is that everyone just wants someone to listen to them. It, it reminds me of a story of an, of an elderly man in the nursing home, and it was his birthday, and the nurse come in to check on him, and, and she said, happy birthday, and he jumped up out of bed. He said, can you guess how old I am? And she looked at him. She said, unbutton your shirt. So he unbuttoned his shirt, and she just kept looking. She said, take your shirt off. So he took his shirt off, and he kept looking, and she said, take your T-shirt off. So he took his T-shirt off, and then she looked at him again. She said, flex your mu muscles. He sat there, and he flexed. She said, you're 88 years old. He said, how did you know that? She said, you told me yesterday. <laughs> we need to listen. Larry King, the late CNN anchor, he once said, I've never learned anything while I was talking. We all need to listen. One thing I know for sure, it doesn't matter what race, it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, Republican, Democrat, Independent. doesn't matter if you're born on the right side of the tracks or the wrong side of the tracks. We're all the same in this sense. We all want to know that someone is listening. If we've passed a good bill or, or we had a good day or we've had a bad day, we just want to know that someone is listening. See, one thing I know about people, people don't know, how, they, don't, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People just want someone to listen to them. So wake up every day and look. Wake up every day and listen. Wake up every day and learn. Just learn. See, it's amazing how much we can learn if we'll just listen and if we'll just look. Every day that God blesses us with is another opportunity for us to learn from something. One thing I've learned in my 18 years of being in full-time ministry is that even in the roughest criticism, in the roughest critics that I've had in my life, I've always found some little small nugget of truth or some little small nugget of something that I can learn from, even in the worst criticisms that I've had. Sometimes lack of humility keeps us from learning. It, you know, after all, it's kind of hard to learn something when you know everything, right? How many of you know somebody that knows everything? How many of you is that person sitting to the left or right? No, don't raise your hand on that. Don't do that. Lack of humility keeps us from learning. Fear will keep us from learning. The fear of failure, the fear of making a mistake will keep us from learning. But you know one thing, I would, rather, I would rather try and fail versus failing to try. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to fail. We learn from our mistakes. We learn from our failures. It's wise to learn from our mistakes, but it's wiser, if that's a word, to learn from the mistakes of others. So we need to look. We need to listen. We need to learn. And the last thing we need to do is we just need to laugh. We just need to laugh. 
Proverbs 17, 22 says this. It says, laughter does the heart good like a medicine. I, I was raised with four brothers. There's five of us boys and all. And as we've already heard, my dad's 96 years old, World War II veteran. Uh, I would highly advise you to stay off the streets of Griffin. He drives every day during breakfast time and dinner time. Just, just stay away from there. But I was raised, my mom used to teach us and, and taught us that through the Lord and laughter, you can get through anything. With the Lord and laughter, you can get through anything. This past year and a half for us has been the toughest year and a half that I've ever walked in my 51 years on this earth. My mom is in the last stages of dementia. And it's not real funny when you walk in her room and she don't even recognize you. It's kind of hard to smile when you're singing songs with her and, and, and she don't even, my mom was a singer. She traveled all over the country singing gospel songs, southern gospel. And when you sing some of the old songs of the church and she can't even find the right note, it's kind of hard to smile during those times. But one thing that I've noticed is that even though she may not even realize what she's doing, even now she's finding ways to make us laugh. A great example of that is about three or four weeks ago, I got a phone call from her nurse. And she said, she said Mr. Shepherd, she said, I just want to kind of update, update you with your mom. She said she was having a bad day today. And uh, I went to her room to try to calm her down. She was real emotional. And she said, Miss Shepherd, she said, what's wrong? Now, keep in mind, my dad's 96 years old. She said, well, she said, I'd be okay if that husband of mine would learn to just keep his britches on. <laughs> They've been married 56 years. He's 96 years old. I mean, the first thing I want to do is find my dad and give him a fist pump. I'm like, you go, dad, 96 years old. <laughs> you just have to laugh. It's okay to laugh. There's something that we can find humor in in everything. And in closing, everything that I've told you today, you may think, well, wait a minute, this has nothing to do with me. You said, what can I do for me to have a good day? Everything that you've said is something that I do for others. That's exactly right. You're servants. I'm a servant. When we accepted that role, it didn't become about me anymore. It became about them. Zig Ziglar, great speaker, he said this, he said, it was amazing that the day that I set out to live every day making other people's dreams come true, he said, it was amazing that all of my dreams became true. So today, if you want to have a great day, learn to look, listen, learn, laugh, and do everything you can to make other people's dreams come true. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you today thankful for you this day, that the day that you have made. I thank you for each man and woman sitting in this room, and I thank you for their service to our great state. And God, I ask you today to give wisdom and direction to each one of them as they govern this state and communities. I ask you, God, to protect our families, our children, and our grandchildren as we travel so many unknowns in this day that, in this day-to-day -day walk. And God, I ask you to forgive us where we fail you. And God, to heal our land and heal our great nation and, and our great and beautiful state. Thank you for all that you do, all that you have done, and for all that you're going to do. I pray this prayer today, Lord, respecting all faiths. But today I pray this prayer in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, the name above all names. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Members may greet the uh, chaplain in the South Annie Room. The chair recognizes Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal of the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, when you talk, you're only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. Dalai Lama. Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, 159th news filing establishes the order of business during the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of House bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees. Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 1371 by Representative Jaspers the 11th, Watson the 172nd, Corbett of the 174th, England the 116th, Campbell the 171st. Bill being titled Act to Amend Chapter 1, Title 31, the official code of George Annotator relating to general provisions regarding health. Special Committee on Access to Quality Health Care. House Bill 1372 by Representative Smith the 133rd, Parsons the 44th, Burns the 159th, and Frazier the 126th. Bill being titled an act to amend Title 25, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to fire protection and safety. Transportation. House Bill 1373 by Representative Bodie, the 62nd Carpenter, the 4th, Douglas, the 78th. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 80 of Title 36, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to general provisions of applicable counties and municipal corporations. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 1374 by Representative Stevens, the 164th bill being titled Act to provide for the creation of one or more community improvement districts in the city of Bloomingdale. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Resolution 798 by Representative Maynard, the 56th, Gravely, the 67th, Apollo, the 32nd, Lemon, the 99th, and Jackson, the 128th. A resolution creating the Joint Study Committee for Cannabis Waste Disposal and Recycling. Regulated Industries. Senate Bill. 374 by Senator Tillery of the 19th, Huffstetler the 52nd, Burke of the 11th, Kennedy the 18th. Bill being titled Act to Amend Part 3 of Article 4, Chapter 12 of Title 45, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to the Georgia Data Analytics Center. Judiciary. Senate Bill 438 by Senator Tippins the 37th, Dugan of the 30th, Miller of the 49th, Strickland of the 17th, Hickman of the 4th, and others. Bill being titled Act to Amend Article 2, Chapter 10 of Title 13. The official code of Georgia annotator relating to the retention of contractual patient payments. Judiciary. Senate Bill 445 by Senator Burns the 23rd, Payne of the 54th, Hickman of the 4th, Gooch of the 51st, Mullis of the 53rd, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Code Section 82143, the official code of Georgia annotator relating to civil and criminal penalties. Regulated Industries. Senate Bill 461 by Senator Dixon of the 45th, Strickland of the 17th, Kennedy of the 18th, Dugan of the 30th, Robertson of the 29th, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend Code Section 1761 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to when offenses are bailable. Judiciary non civil. Senate Bill 466 by Senator Jones of the 10th. The bill being titled an act to amend an act establishing in DeKalb County districts from which members of the County Board of Education shall be elected. Intergovernmental coordination. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 1340 by Representative Workheiser of the 157th. The bill to amend an act to provide a new charter for the city of Glenville. House Bill 1341 by Representative Camp of the 131st. The bill to amend an act providing an election of members of the Board of Education of Pike County. House Bill 1342 by Representative Parsons of the 44th. Jones of the 25th, Dempsey of the 13th, Clark of the 147th, Carpenter of the 4th, a bill relating to exemptions from sales and use tax. House Bill 1343 by Representative Clark of the 147th, Hitchens of the 161st, Williams of the 168th, Belton of the 112th, Lumsden of the 12th, and others, a bill relating to adjunct 
General Duties, Record Seal, and Effective Seal on Documentary Evidence, Helmet Bill 1344 by Representative Clark of the 147th, Kitchens of the 161st, Williams of the 168th, Belton of the 112th, Lumsden of the 12th, and others, a bill relating to state agencies not to discriminate in employment against servicemen's wives, House Bill 1345 by Representative Clark of the 147th, Hitchens of the 161st, Williams of the 168th, Belton of the 112th, Lumsden of the 12th, and others, a bill relating to personnel in relation to military affairs, House Bill 1346 by Representative Ballinger of the 23rd, Martin of the 49th, Thomas of the 21st, Smith of the 18th, Holcomb of the 81st, a bill relating to superior courts, House Bill 1347 by Representative Belton of the 112th, a bill relating to incorporation and municipal corporations, House Bill 1348 by Representative Richard the 97th, Green of the 151st, McLaurin of the 51st, Couch of the 50th, Cooper of the 43rd, and others, a bill relating to offenses against public health and morals, House Bill 1349 by Representative Ridley of the 6th, Rhodes of the 20th, Corbett of the 174th, Burchette of the 176th, Watson of the 172nd, a bill relating to legislative declarations, ownership and custody of wildlife, preservation of hunting and fishing opportunities, promotion and right to hunt, trap or fish, local regulation, and general offenses. House Bill 1350 by Representative Wade of the 9th, Scoggins of the 14th, Gunter of the 8th, Gravely of the 67th, Estration of the 104th, and others, a bill relating to probate of wills, trust, and administration of estates. House Bill 1351 by Representative Knight of the 130th, Hatchet of the 150th, Newton of the 123rd, England of the 116th, Burns of the 159th and others, a bill relating to Medicaid assistance, House Bill 1352 by Representative Smith of the 133rd, Estration of the 104th, Stevens of the 164th, Green of the 151st, a bill relating to disposition of unclaimed property, House Bill 1353 by Representative Dempsey of the 13th, Estration of the 104th, Cooper of the 43rd, Oliver of the 82nd, Jones of the 25th, a bill relating to issues of insanity and mental incompetency in pretrial proceedings, House Bill 1354 by Representative Holcomb of the 81st, Houston of the 170th, Estration of the 104th, Hughley of the 136th, a bill relating to claims advisory board, House Bill 1355 by Representative Dempsey of the 13th, Cooper of the 43rd, Drenner of the 85th, Bet Gamble of the 15th, Newton of the 123rd, and others, a bill relating to lead poisoning prevention. House Bill 1356 by Representative Wynn of the 89th, Shannon of the 84th, Clark of the 108th, Oliver of the 82nd, Bernal of the 77th, and others. Bill relating to primaries and elections. House Bill 1357 by Representative Smith of the 18th, Gamble of the 15th, Dubnick of the 29th. The bill relating to the Professional Standards Commission authority to create and implement standards and procedures. House Bill 1358 by Representative Ballinger of the 23rd, Powell of the 32nd, Jaspers of the 11th, Bonner of the 72nd, Montana of the 17th, and others, a bill relating to general provisions regarding parks, historic areas, memorials, and recreation, House Bill 1359, by Representative Powell of the 32nd, Jaspers of the 11th, Leverett of the 33rd, a bill relating to primaries and elections, House Bill 1360, by Representative Wade of the 9th, Martin of the 49th, Gunter of the 8th, Hawkins of the 27th, Tarvin of the 2nd, and others, a bill relating to revenue and taxation, House Bill 1361, by Representative Leverett of the 33rd, a bill relating to civil practice, House Bill 1367, by Representative Tarvin of the 2nd, Cameron of the First, a bill relating to amended act providing for the election of members of the Board of Education of Walker County. House Bill 1368 by Representative Dukes of the 154th, a bill to provide for the Board of Elections and Registration for Miller County. House Bill 1369 by Representative Williams of the 168th and Stevens of the 164th, a bill to amend an act creating Board of Education of Liberty County. House Bill 1370 by Representative Williams of the 168th and Stevens of the 164th, a bill to authorize the governing authority of Liberty County to levy an excise tax. Senate Bill 84 by Senator Alberts of the 56th, Harper of the 7th, Robertson of the 29th, a bill relating to the Peace Officers Annuity and Benefit Fund, House, Senate Bill 316 by Rep. Senator Anna Navarte of the 31st, Strickland of the 17th, Robertson of the 29th, Payne of the 40, 54th, Miller of the 49th, and others, a bill relating to stocking, Senate Bill 341 by Senator Kirkpatrick of the 32nd, Watson of the 1st, Burke of the 11th, House Detler of the 52nd, Al of the 48th, and others, a bill relating to prior authorization of health care services. Senate Bill 364 by Senator Tillery of the 9th, Brass of the 28th, Duggan of the 30th, Couchert of the 46th, Hatchet of the 50th, and others. A bill relating to general provisions relative to telephone services. Three second readers. Reports of standing committees. The clerk will read. Representative Hawkins, the 27th District Chairman of the Committee on Budget and Fiscal Affairs Oversight, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Budget and Fiscal Affairs Oversight has had under consideration the following bills of the House. Instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 1040 due pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Hawkins of the 27th District. 
Chairman. Representative Dubnik of the 29th District Chairman of the Committee on Education submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Education is out in consideration following bills of the House. Instructed me to report same back to the House the following recommendation. House Resolution 650 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 1215 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 1217 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 1245 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Dubnik of the 29th District. Chairman. Representative Don Parsons, the 44th District Chairman of the Committee on Energy, Utilities, and Telecommunications, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Energy, Utility, and Telecommunications has added under consideration the following bills of the House. Instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendation. House Bill 1307 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Don Parsons, the 44th District Chairman. Representative Darlene Taylor, the 173rd District Chairman of the Committee on Governmental Affairs, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Governmental Affairs is under consideration following Bill of the House. Instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendation. House Bill 839 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted. Representative Darlene Taylor, 173rd District Chairman. Representative Cooper, the 43rd District Chairman of the Committee on Health and Human Services, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Health and Human Services had under consideration following bills of the House. And instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 1186 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1219 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1276 do pass. Respectfully submitted. Representative Cooper, the 43rd District Chairman. Representative Bill Workheiser, the 157th District Chairman of the Committee on Industry and Labor, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Industry and Labor sat under consideration the following bills of the House. And it's instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 389 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 397 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Bill Workheiser, the 157th District Chairman. Representative Eddie Lumsden, the 12th District Chairman of the Committee on Insurance, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Insurance has had under consideration the following bills of the House. This instructed me to report the same back to the House and the following recommendations. House Bill 1059 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1308 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1288 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1324 do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Eddie Lumsden of the 12th District Chairman. Representative Jan Tankers of the 160th District Chairman of the Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination and Locals had under consideration the following bills of the House and Senate. It's instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 1362 do pass. House Bill 1363 do pass. House Bill 1364 do pass. House Bill 1365 do pass. House Bill 1366 do pass. Senate Bill 446 do pass by substitute. The Senate Bill 463 do pass. Senate Bill 464 do pass. Senate Bill 473 do pass. Senate Bill 475 do pass. Senate Bill 476 do pass. Senate Bill 488 do pass. Senate Bill 489 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Jan Tankersley, the 160th District Chairman. Representative Administration of the 104th District Chairman of the Committee on Judiciary submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Judiciary is under consideration the following bills of the House. It's instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Resolution 707 do pass by substitute. House Bill 974 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1088 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1294 do pass. House Bill 1321 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1361 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Astration, the 104th District Chairman. Representative James Burchetta, the 176th District Chairman of the Committee on Judiciary Non Civil, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Judiciary Non Civil is that under consideration the following bills of the House. It's instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 1183 do pass by substitute. House Bill 1188 do pass. Respectfully submitted. James Burchett of the 176th District Chairman. Representative Carson of the 46th District Chairman of the Committee on Retirement submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Retirement has that under consideration the following bill of the House. It instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendation. House Bill 925 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Carson of the 46th District Chairman. 
Representative Gerald Green of the 151st District Chairman of the Committee on State Properties submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on State Properties is under on consideration the following bill of the Senate. is instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. Senate Bill 326 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Gerald Green of the 151st District Chairman. Representative Shaw Blackman of the 146th District Chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, Committee on Ways and Means presented on consideration the following bills of the House. It instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendations. House Bill 1064 do pass. House Bill 896 do pass. House Bill 1034 do pass. House Bill 1320 do pass. House Bill 500 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Shaw Blackman of the 146th District Chairman. That completes the reading of the reports of standing committees. Okay, we're going on now to the local calendar. <clears throat> Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills. If there is no objection, we will vote on the local calendar as a whole with a recorded vote. Hearing no objection, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the local calendar. House Bill 1362 by Representative Perkle, the 155th Irwin County. House Bill 1363 by Representative Bentley, the 139th Macon County. House Bill 1364 by Representative Manola, which is the 42nd Cobb County. House Bill 1365 by Representative Perkle, the 155th Coffee County. House Bill 1366 by Representative Bentley, the 139th Macon County. Senate Bill 446 by substitute by Senator Burns, the 23rd Warren County. Senate Bill 463 by Senator Jones, the 10th Henry County. Senate Bill 464 by Senator Jones, the 10th Henry County. Senate Bill 473 by Senator Sims, the 12th Sumter County. Senate Bill 475 by Senator Lucas, the 26th Wilkerson County. Senate Bill 476 by Senator Lucas, the 26th Wilkinson County. Senate Bill 488 by Senator Lucas, the 26th Twiggs County and Senate Bill 489 by Senator Lucas of the 26th, Twiggs County. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on the local calendar? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bills? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to shall these bills now pass all those in favor of the passage of the bills on the local calendar will vote aye all those opposed will vote no and the clerk will unlock the machines
Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the passage of the bills on the local calendar, the ayes are 131, the nays are 18. These bills, having received the requisite constitutional majority, are therefore passed. For what purpose does Chairman Tankersley rise? Mr. Speaker, I rise to make a motion. State your motion. I move that we immediately transfer the local calendar to the Senate. Chairman Tankersley has moved that the local bills just passed by this House be immediately transmitted to the Senate. Is there objection? Is there objection? There is objection. Does the lady move? Lady moves. All those in favor of the motion for immediate transmittal of the local bills will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the lady's motion for immediate transmittal, the ayes are 111, the nays are 39, and the bills are being immediately transmitted to the State Senate. We're going on now to morning orders. Chair is going to ask that you take your seats if you're in the chamber and give attention to the members in the well. Chair, recognize uh, morning orders will be limited to one minute each. Chair recognizes Chairman Green for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This morning I come to you with a very heavy heart. This morning we honor the life and memory of Tyler Jermaine Wins. And the state of Georgia, and especially Early County, mourns the loss of one of its most distinguished citizens with the passing of this young man. This 18-year-old is the beloved son of Jermaine and Denise Sparrow. Tyler was in the Early County High School Reach Scholar Program, and I watched him from the grade, the eighth grade, to join the Reach Program there. Taken too soon, Tyler was cherished by his peers for his strength and generous heart, and no matter what was asked of him, he carried himself with grace and humility. I ask that we stop a moment and reflect upon the family and the memory of Tyler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Chair recognizes Representative Mac Jackson for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask uh, Representative Brian Prince to join me. This morning we come with a heavy heart. On yesterday, we lost a good man in Jefferson County. Commissioner Tommy New served on the Board of Commissioners for over 42 years. He was a true friend and mentor. He always gave me good advice. In the words of James Taylor, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days when I could not find a friend, but I always thought that I would see you again. So long, my friend. Would you join us in a moment of silence? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, we, we yield the well. The chair recognizes the minority leader of this house, 
Leader Beverly for a morning order. Members will give the gentleman your respect and attention while he's in the well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At the beginning of this President's Day weekend, I am reminded of President Abraham Lincoln. Not necessarily my favorite president, but he had some tremendous sayings that I think are worth repeating today given the current state of affairs in the General Assembly. To the people of this state, Mr. Speaker and colleagues, the leading principle, the sheer anchor of American republicanism has not been honored in this body. Therefore, the result is wrong. First quote that Abraham Lincoln said is, stand with anybody that stands right. Stand with him while he is right and part with him when he is wrong. The process in which local redistricting has been handled under this gold dome is wrong. Mr. Speaker, it has been no less than what we can easily be termed as a hostile takeover by the majority party. And the Georgia House Democratic Party will not stand for or with anyone because this is wrong. Second quote, no man is good enough to govern another man without the other's consent. I say this is a leading principle, the sheer anchor of American republicanism. Mr. Speaker, the Georgia House Democratic Party does not consent to this hostile takeover. We are each elected by the people of this great state to represent their interest in their districts, not mine, not yours, but the people of Georgia and their districts. So I feel compelled this morning, responsible this morning to simply remind those of you in the majority party that continuously seek to justify wrong by using carve outs and exceptions, by changing the rules during the game, by moving the goal post, because you see that you are losing the game by wielding your political power to remind us in a minority party that your power politics supersedes principle, that your power politics supersedes the will of the people because you say so. The sheer anger and frustration that we feel as a result of you not playing by the rule is as true and as honest as any human being would feel, given the expectation of fairness by receiving the whole, the cold, hard truth of indifference. Third quote I'll leave you with this morning, Mr. Speaker. We ask for just the same thing, fairness and fairness only. Mr. Speaker, you can determine that so far as within your power, you, I, and all others will have one thing as we go through this General Assembly fairness. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield a well. Chair recognizes Chairman S Stevens for a morning order. He waves. Chair recognizes um, Chairman Chuck Martin for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I rise today to recognize our world champion, 2021 world champion, Atlanta Braves. You know, today, normally, Major League Baseball pitchers and catchers would be reporting to Arizona and Florida to start spring training. They are not. They are not because Commissioner Manafort suggested a lockout in December and has stopped America's pastime. He has failed the fans of Arizona and Florida, the economies of Arizona and Florida, like he failed Georgia last year when he moved the All-Star game. Commissioner, you can do better. You can do better. Bring back our national pastime. Make good decisions so the fans of the game, America's pastime, can enjoy that once again in 2022. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative McLean for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I just want folks to know one thing before I do my moment in black history. The, the players cannot, the players can only strike. The owners are the only one who can lock people out. The owners are the ones who have locked baseball out. No players, no, no union, 
So, Mr. Speaker, I want to make sure that this body knows that players cannot, they only can strike. Players can only strike. Okay, I only get a minute, but I'm going to go. My, my moment in black history to be here briefly is, is that I will not talk about the bombing in Tulsa, Oklahoma, known as Black Wall Street in May. I will not talk about what happened on April 4th, 1968 in Memphis, assassinating Dr. King. But I will talk about more so is me coming as a 22 young man. And I like to say that, you know, when you come here as a 22 young man, the people you meet, you know, Reverend Jose Williams taught us he was unbossed and unbought. You also had, you know, Joe Lowry, who always said, if you're yellow, you must be mellow. If you're brown, you hang around. If you're red, you're a dead man. If you're white, you're right. If you're black, you get back. But then it was always his wife, Mrs. Evelyn Lowry Gibson, my homegirl, who always said one thing. She says, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. She taught me that. And then I want to thank Representative Hughley and Representative Bodie for, for talking about I am a man and also doing something on Reverend James Orange, who brought me into the movement in 1978 because he called everybody leader. He always thought that everybody could lead. And one of the things that I always thought about, Congressman John Lewis, good trouble. He taught us good trouble. I never knew what that meant, but it was good trouble. And then his Reverend Jesse Jackson. Well, he always told me I'm keeping hope alive. And I didn't understand that at all. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to, I'm going to yield the well with Reverend Abba Love told us. And when Reverend Abba Love says, please, if we work together, it really works. Working together works. Working together will always work. And so those people have made me who I am today. And what I only want to say to you all is this, that one has brought me to right is right and wrong is wrong. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Derek Jackson for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 115 years ago, seven young men in Ithaca, New York, at Cornell University, formed the very first black Greek lettered organization, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, in which I'm a member of. Today, Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen, is our 15th annual Alpha Day at the Capitol, where we get an opportunity to engage our legislators because we continue to live by manly deeds, scholarship, and the love for all mankind. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative McLeod for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, colleagues, and good morning. It's the real McCoy. Have you ever wondered what that saying, where that saying came from? Well, they are referring to Mr. Elijah McCoy, born in 1844 in Ontario, Canada. The parents, his parents escaped from slavery in Kentucky via the Underground Railroad. He was educated in Scotland in the field of engineering. Upon returning to the United States, he faced discrimination because he was black. He couldn't get a job in, in engineering because his white managers didn't think a black man could be an engineer. So they, would pu they put him to work in the boiler room. That's where he invented the automatic oiling device for moving parts in steam locomotives known as the oil drip cup in 1872. He has 60 patents for his lubrication devices. Because his inventions were so superior all, uh, to all others, people often describe anything that was really good as the real McCoy. So have you enjoyed a peanut butter sandwich today? You can thank Mr. Carver for, a, for, for inventing 300 ways to use peanuts. Who is Madam C.J. Walker? Well, she is the first self-made woman millionaire. Ladies, cosmetics, and hair care was her claim to fame. Stop the traffic signal. That's Garrett Morgan. Garrett Morgan. 
And the gas mask, 1944, 1914. I could go on all day telling you about these awesome inventions, but I will stop here. Let's, let me just big up all the black scientists, engineers, and inventors, because my black is beautiful, 24-7, 365 days. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Chairman Ballinger for a morning order. Hey, y'all. I don't come to the well very much. I think this is actually my first morning order. Uh, maybe I did the uh, <clears throat> Girl Scouts once, but that was about it. Um, but I just, I, uh, you know, some things just rise to the level of needing a comment. Um, and our minority leader, uh, I felt like his comments were incendiary. And I think they were uncalled for. And I think, above all, they were unfair. Um, it's one thing to preach, it's another to walk the walk. So, um, you know, before we get into he did this, she said this, all of that, I think we need to look within ourselves and see how we're doing and what we're doing to cross it, to make it better and to make it more fair for everybody in this house. Everybody in this house wants the best Georgia can be, and I truly believe that. Everybody wants the very best state, and everybody works towards that. We need to all work, to, and it takes all of us pulling together. And I do hope that we'll be able to do that with a true sense of fairness. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Hutchinson for a morning order. Good morning, colleagues. Today I bring to you six-year-old Sean. Sean is a sensitive, loving, and caring boy who enjoys watching Mickey Mouse, the word party, playing his tablet, and with monster trucks and matching objects. We have hundreds of children that are available for adoption in Georgia. The most difficult children to place are those with special needs. So I encourage you to look into children who are available for adoption, older children, and children with special needs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Chairman Powell for a morning order. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, come, to, come to that floor this morning to notify folks. A lot of y'all have asked me about a repair bill to the cannabis, uh, medical cannabis situation we have. Three years ago, for those of you who were here, this House overwhelmingly passed uh, the process to produce medical cannabis to those children and sick people in Georgia that science has proved that uh, cannabis oil is a benefit to. Three years later, it still hasn't happened. Uh, we had some hearings back in November during the special session, and we analyzed some major problems. The problems that exist, quite frankly, is because of a, of a problem they had in the evaluation process. And we have been working on it, and it's not perfect, but it does fix the problem so that they can get on issuing licenses to get medical cannabis to the sick and the deserving folks in the state of Georgia. I bring this to your attention. I've had this, there's been a lot of people that signed this, and I'm going to lay it over on the side over here. So anyone who wishes to sign, it's available before we drop it in. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take that back to your desk uh, to keep down congestion up here. It'll Mr. be Chairman. on my desk. Chair recognizes Chairman Watson for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be brief. Uh, today is one of my favorite days of the year. It's National Cabbage Day. Uh, Georgia produces over 30,000 acres of uh, cabbage, and most of those are grown in uh, in my, my district, and so uh, appreciate, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And I'm going to ask members to please 
come to order. Have a special morning order. Please take your seats. Chair recognizes the chairman of the House Appropriations Committee, Chairman England, <clears throat> for a special morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I've always had a plan. Just never really planned how to do this. Um, today I'm announcing I will not be seeking re-election for another term. You know, with age comes wisdom too. And as a young man, I always had a plan. And I had a plan to be here one day. The Lord consented. And I feel like the Lord has told me now it's time to move on. Eighteen years in this body has been some of the most meaningful work in my entire life. I never dreamed that I would be here this long and have the opportunity to work with you, to get to know you, to solve issues in this great state. You know, I was, I was a fifth grader was the first time I ever come up here, and it was a fifth grade field trip from Little Old County Line Elementary School. Being smiry, I, I did the math this morning. You were in your second year of your first term <laughs> when we were here. <laughs> I got to thinking about that last night. I said, I need to go back and see his swearing in date and did the math and I'm like, wow, that's incredible. My hat's off to you, sir. I know how hard it's been on me and my family and I, I, I just have an idea of how hard it's been on you and your family. And so many others of you in here, Chairman Parrish, Chairman Green, so many others, and I'm on, I, I don't wanna start naming names because I'll leave them out. But each and every one of you, whether you've been here for a year, six months, two years, 10 years, 20 years, it takes a concerted effort of not only yourself, but those back home that have faith in you. And it's not just your family. It's those that love you in your community. It's those that love me in my community. Like Miss Beth Caldwell, who was the person that called me the morning that qualifying opened up for a vacant seat and said, Terry, now is your time. We lost her a couple of years ago. Um, but she never failed to tell me, as bad a health as she got into, she never failed to tell me every time I saw her how proud she was of me. I was proud of her. She'd been a leader in our community and someone that I just, I treasured. I loved her. You know, I've had the opportunity to serve under two speakers and three different governors. And it, it, it's, it's been a wild ride a lot of times. Many of you in here have served under, the, under many of the same people. But there's one thing I never doubted about those five individuals. And it was their love for this state. And the love for the people that live here. Each and every one had, had their own way of going about showing that love. But there was no doubt in my mind that they love this state. There's no doubt in my mind that all 180 of us love this state and our people. You know, we fight, we argue, we get mad at one another, but I've yet to have a meeting in my office or anywhere else in this building in 18 years that someone was trying to do spite to someone else because of anger. There might have been other meetings where that was going on, but I never was part of one of those. But it's always been heated discussion, or not always been heated discussion, but it's always been discussions of what is best and how do we best serve these individuals that call Georgia home, that we call our constituents, the ones that send us down here to do this job. You know, 12 years as an appropriations chairman is an awful long time. Um, 
And quite honestly, it takes about the first five or six to even know what you're doing. But the one great thing about that job and the hours it takes to do that job is the greatness that I get to see, that we get to see in this state. And the state employees that are out there working every day, from the defects worker on the coast to the state trooper in the mountains to the Department of Ag employee in, in deep southwest Georgia checking on cabbages, Sam. But they love this state as well. They, they're, they're very seldom lauded. And that's why you'll find me a lot of times when I get up here, call attention to them because they're out there every day. Just like we come here every day, they're on their jobs every day as well. I had some incredible role models during this tenure, that, and, and three in particular that I want to mention right now that are no longer with us. Johnny Metis, Jay Powell, and Jack Hill. Johnny was in the class of 2005 with me and several others, majority leader and a few others in this room. And in many ways, Johnny was our daddy. He was our big brother. He was our crazy little brother sometimes. But he was a mentor. He could be a little sideways. That's what made him a good rules chairman. Isn't that right, Dean? You got to be a little sideways sometimes in that job. Jay was one of the most intelligent people I've ever had the, the, the chance in my life to work with. Jay would dive into topics and, and understand them better than I could ever fathom to understand. And then my buddy Jack. Jack in many ways was my big brother. In many ways he was a father figure as well. And as someone had said yesterday, Jack was one of those people that had a big heart. He taught me a lot about having a big heart. As a gentleman sits in this chamber as well that uh, has had to put up with me in an apartment here in Atlanta for a cumulative total of a little over four years, Representative Benton. Tommy's been one of those. We, we get back to the apartment a lot of nights eating a can of soup and just have some of the most wonderful discussions about history, not just Georgia history, not just Jackson or Bear County history, but about you know, American history and the things that have happened and the great individuals of all walks of life that have had such a, put such a, a, a stamp on our state and on our country. Tommy, thanks for putting up with me going to bed early a lot of nights. He, he jokes at me pretty hard about I was going to turn into a pumpkin when I walked to the bedroom at about 7.15, but Hey, when you get here, the hour I get here and some others get here, you got to go to bed early. Our friends across the building in the Senate, I know we pick on each other and we say uh, some, some crude things sometimes about one another. But, you know, there's 56 individual, individuals over there that I count as my friends as well and ones that I've worked with for many years on many different issues. And, uh, you know, one that, that kind of came into my life a couple years ago, and that's... Chairman Blake Tillery. Uh, Blake and I have had the, the, the pleasure of working together. He may say it wasn't a pleasure working with me, but it was certainly a pleasure working with him over the last two years. Um, he had big shoes to fill. He won't fill Jack's shoes, but he's going to size some out of his own. Incredible young man. I've already talked a little bit about our state employees um, that, that cover the state all over. But you know, each person I've heard do one of these speeches has always made it a point, and I will too, to thank the staff here at the Capitol. From the clerk's office to, to everybody, that, that the, our doorkeepers, our messengers, all those folks that always have a smile on their face, they're always the ones making sure that whatever it is, what harebrained idea we might have, they work to help us see through either that it was a harebrained idea or that it had merit. Legislative Council, bless their hearts, I can't imagine what they go through uh, during session, and they do an incredible job. But the one staff that I'm most proud of 
that have done things for me that, that I could have never done for myself and prepared me in ways that I could never prepare myself as well. And that's our house budget and research office. Martha and Christine are hiding over in the windowsill. The young people that we have working there are some of the most incredible in this country. And I say that because I can back it up. Their colleagues from around the country that do the same job they do on a yearly basis for us have recognized many of those in our office as being the best in the country. And it ain't bragging when you can back it up. I'm gonna brag on them a little bit, but I can back it up too. Martha and Christine quite often are referred to as my capital wives. Um, Quite honestly, during session, for the three months we're in session, generally I see a lot more of them than I do of Cindy. Uh, and they stay on me about as much as Cindy does too. But they're, they're, they're two incredible people. And I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out to John Brown. John was the director of the office when I became chairman of the committee. And John was a very patient soul, is a very patient soul. Uh, and John helped me immensely of trying to grow into the role. My friends in Bexar County, those folks that have voted to send me down here all these times, many of them shaking their heads thinking, oh Lord, can't figure out what he'll mess up this time. But you know, they've had a faith in me that many times I didn't have in myself. Our speaker. I mentioned the fifth grader a while ago. Fifth graders dream about a lot of things. I dreamed about being an astronaut, being a firefighter, being an architect, doing all, thing, all kinds of things, but also this was always in the back of my mind. And in those dreams that you get carried away with sometimes, you dream, well, I, you know, if the speaker would just, just know my name, that would be cool. If the governor would just know my name, that would be cool. I mentioned a while ago, two speakers and three governors. I've been blessed. I got to know them, they knew my name. I count them friends. But our current speaker, I count my brother. We've been down some tough roads. We've been down some good roads. We've been on the mountaintop, we've been in the valley. You know, it, it gets, a little tangled up, but Nietzsche once said, out of chaos comes order. And our house was in chaos at one point. And there was one man that, that had the ability, I felt had the ability, actually a year before, we actually had the chance to name him our speaker, and that was David Ralston. As Johnny Meadows would refer to him sometimes, the chubby ridge runner. <clears throat> That was Johnny speaking, that wasn't me. <laughs> but we were, we, were, we were a body, we were a family in disorder when Speaker Ralston became our speaker. And out of that chaos came order. Mr. Leader, we don't always agree on how the order is done, but order is better than chaos any day. And that's what we've had. A steady hand, soft shoulder to cry on or get through things with, but a steadfast belief in this state and an unquestionable love for this body. Second only to my love for this body. Family is one of those things that none of us can replace. We can make friends that are as close as family, and I have many friends that are family. If it were not for family, none of us could be here, none of us could do what we do. I owe an incredible debt of gratitude to my family, to my mom and my dad. My mom was the one that kind of pushed me over the edge to go on and do this. We lost her a little over five years ago. But my daddy's been the one that, that, that keeps prodding me. Son, you're doing good. Keep on. Proud of you. 
my bride. Y'all, we were high school sweethearts. We started dating as juniors in high school. I looked around for a long time. But when I locked in, I locked in. <laughs> I think she locked into me too. Cindy's been my rock. She's been my, my foundation for so many things. And as I said a minute ago, just like family, had it not been for her, it would have not been possible at all for me to be here. Your spouses, it would not be at all possible for you to be here without them. You know, every morning my, my phone goes off with a, a verse out of Esther that, I, it was funny, a few years ago, it seemed like every preacher that got up in front of us there one year, I think I marked off it was 16 different preachers in our 40 days, quoted the same verse, born for such a time as this. So my clock goes off every morning at 7.30 to remind me. And quite honestly, it was the words that I needed on many days to know that I'm supposed to be here and I'm supposed to be doing my job. But born for such a time as this, all of us that are in this building today were born for such a time of this, as this. Those that have preceded us were that way. Those that will follow us were that way because it's God ordained that they were born for such a time as this. The great philosopher Jerry Clower. Those of you young ones in here that don't have a clue who that is, go look him up on YouTube. Once said, love one another. L-O-V-E, love. God gave us no greater commandment than to love one another. I love you. You have shown your love to me. I'm going to finish the drill, but there will be someone else from the 116th district here next year to pick up the mantle and, and run on with it. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your love. God bless each and every one of you. We're going to be at ease here for just a moment before we go to the rules calendar. I'm, I know many of you want to speak to Chairman Ingram.
the chair doesn't want to um, interrupt uh, the tribute to Chairman England, so um, we're going to go ahead now and adjourn for lunch or recess for lunch, and we'll come back in at 1245.